Britt's been really an incredible example of how UCSF leadership can support scientists uh, to do their work. Also, Kristen Bull, who's been like the genius behind all the communications. And then, of course, Laura Schmidt for, for leading us in this um, effort. We've been talking about it for a long time. She actually did something about it, so that's great. So um, a couple of messages I wanted to convey, um, first and foremost, is that people tend to think about the sugar problem as the obesity problem. And while sugar absolutely contributes to obesity, um, it is not necessarily the pathway through which bad health happens. You can get sick from sugar in the absence of becoming obese. You can also get sh sick from sugar in the presence of obesity, but the two are not always entirely linked. Um, the three major chronic diseases that are a consequence, well, I'll say four because we have a dentist on the panel. Um, the four major chronic diseases, and because it's true, uh, the first one is chronic periodontal disease or gum disease. And gum disease is bad because you lose your teeth and then you need dentures, and then it's harder to eat fresh fruits and vegetables, so there's a cycle. So periodontal disease. The second uh, major public health issue is cardiovascular disease, which means heart disease and stroke. Um, the third is type 2 diabetes, and the fourth is liver disease and liver failure, and I'm going to go into each one of these in some detail. Um, first, let me just tell a little story. It's not on the slide, but when I started as a resident at San Francisco General Hospital in my clinic, um, it was pretty rare for me to take care of a patient with diabetes. And when I saw a patient with diabetes, I just referred them to the diabetes clinic, which is the specialist clinic, because there were relatively few of them, and we were relatively untrained to take care of them in the outpatient setting. Um, flash forward 25 years later, um, I've lost hair, I've gained a little weight, um, I know I'm chief of the division, and half of my patient visits in clinic are with people who have type 2 diabetes. Half. And you can't say it's because human beings changed that dramatically in one generation. Something in the environment changed, and what really changed was the sugar consumption. So that's... Um, Fact number one. Fact number two, I just want to make clear, because I know many of you are going to have this confusion in your mind, which is what is sugar? So uh, Kristen was showing you the Domino sugar package. That has sucrose in it. That's the chemical name, sucrose. And sucrose is made up of two types of sugar, glucose and fructose. And what I'm going to talk about next really relates to the fructose component of sugar, um, which appears to be particularly problematic and some uh, people believe even toxic to the body. So glucose, we kind of digest, absorb, and our body kind of uses in a fairly seamless way. Fructose, on the other hand, is digested, absorbed, and then is what's called metabolized or processed solely by the liver. So all the sugar we eat, half of it goes to the liver. And the liver is a wonderful organ, but it can only do so much so quickly. And if the liver gets overwhelmed with fructose, like in high fructose corn syrup, which is almost exclusively the fructose component of sugar, it begins to transform that fructose into fat. So the liver becomes fatty. So the first problem we see with high exposure and intake of sugar and high fructose corn syrup is fatty liver. And fatty liver is one of the components of what is called metabolic syndrome, these metabolic diseases that you've heard about. In some communities, liver failure from this process is more common than liver failure from hepatitis. Hepatitis A, B, and C. People are needing liver transplants now in this country because of their intake of fructose. The second um, problem we see related to particularly fructose intake is diabetes. And then the third is heart disease. Um, there have been a number of studies now showing that um, intake of uh, sugar uh, is directly proportional to the hazard of having heart disease. The more sugar, added sugar you eat, the greater your risk. If you're in the highest quintile, the highest fifth 
of the U.S. population in terms of how much added sugar you eat, you've got over a two-fold risk of heart attack and stroke. Even after controlling for, adjusting for obesity, it's not the obesity, it's just the sugar intake. So we don't know exactly why this happens. It may be that the fat that the liver produces from the fructose then goes into the bloodstream and that fat clogs your arteries. We don't really know, but we do know that there is this very strong relationship between sugar, added sugar intake and heart disease and stroke. And then when you have that high level of blood sugar in your mouth and in your bloodstream, the bacteria in your mouth and in your bloodstream love to set up shop in the gums. It's like a great, they're like so happy. They're like, oh, sugar, yeah, let's, you know. And not only does this periodontal disease cause tooth loss, but there's growing evidence that active inflammation in the mouth can promote diabetes, can promote kidney failure, and the need for dialysis. These other kinds of chronic diseases that all go together. And as you know, diabetes itself is a horrible disease related to blindness, amputations, kidney failure, impotence, you name it, you can get it from type 2 diabetes. So in sum, um, the excessive intake of added sugar, and we're not talking about people who are drinking 19 Cokes a day, we're talking about what Kristen was presenting, um, leads to a disruption in the normal function of the liver, uh, which can't process this fructose. Instead, it begins to create fat in the liver and make you insulin resistant, which in turn leads to diabetes, heart disease, periodontal disease, maybe kidney disease, and some tantalizing evidence, although small, about even causing progression uh, of cancer and poor recovery from, from cancer. That's early science. But clearly related to this metabolic spectrum of diseases, and we need to intervene at the individual level, we need to intervene at the institutional level and at the societal level if we're going to reduce the burden of a preventable set of diseases um, on our population. I'll just say one last thing and then I'll pass it off, which is that I work at San Francisco General Hospital, which obviously takes care of folks in the southeast corner of the city, where there's the highest double, triple, quadruple the rate of uh, consumption of agar added sugars in, uh, in the diet as compared to, let's say, this neighborhood, and yet that population is the least aware of the science that we're presenting. So there have to be efforts to kind of spread the word in a way that can be both understood and accepted, because we're asking people to make some fundamental changes.